Okay, question 17. We haven't fully finished differentiation, but you know what dy by dx means and how to calculate it. So x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15x plus 5. Individually, term by term, the power comes down and multiplies. So x cubed, the power of 3 comes down and the, um, the number, the power goes down by 1. So x cubed becomes 3x squared minus 2x squared. The 2 comes down and joins the 2 at the front times in to make 4x to the power 1. And then minus 15. x with a little 1 up there. We don't bother writing it. It comes down and multiplies the 15 to make 15x to the power naught. But x to the power naught is just 1 because anything to the power of 0 is 1, which means we've got minus 15 by itself on the end and the plus 5 disappears. So we're left with the final answer for the differentiation dy over dx is 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. In part b, we're given that same equation and we're asked to find out where that equation has a negative gradient. Well, this equation is a cubic, a positive cubic. So it's got this shape. It goes up and then down and then back up again. OK, so what we're looking for where it has a negative gradient, this bit here between the, the peak and the trough, the top and the bottom, the maximum and the minimum. So we can calculate those values using differentiation, if you remember. They're called stationary points. And what's special about them is where the gradient or where dy by dx equals zero. So if I've got this equation for the gradient or dy by dx, I need to put this equal to zero, which is what I've just done there. It's a nice one that factorizes, albeit with a three at the front. So you've got a three at the front of one bracket and then just an x at the uh, front of the other. You need two numbers that multiply and make minus 15. One of them's got to be a plus and one of them's got to be a minus for that to happen. And one of them needs to times by 3, and the other one adds on to make minus 4. So you, you might need to manipulate or play with that for a little bit until you come up with the answers of plus 5 and minus 3. It's important that you get them the right way round. To find the stationary points, you need to find out where either of these brackets could be equal to 0. Again, how do you get um, a 0 when you multiply two brackets to, together, either when the left-hand bracket is a 0 or when the right-hand bracket is a 0. How do you make this right-hand bracket equal to 0? x would need to be 3. How do you make this left-hand bracket equal to 0? x would need to be minus 5 over 3. OK, so these are the two values where you've got the peak and the trough. If we were to put this on the on a graph, obviously the x value at minus 5 over 3 would be to the left of where x equals 3. So in between those two x values on the graph is where you would get the downhill part or the negative gradient of this cubic graph. So anywhere where x is between these two values is where you would get a negative gradient. How you write that is that x needs to be smaller than 3 but bigger than minus 5 over 3.